Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another quick episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Well, the last time we took apart the old Grundy television, and out of that thing I pulled a variety of uh, different microchips, and uh, I looked up the data sheets of those, and uh, we got all kinds of stuff. Um, vertical deflection and east-west output circuit, or uh, a dual 5.1 volt regulator with uh, standby and shut off one rail option, an RGB high voltage video amplifier, and a 20 and 20 watt stereo amplifier. Well, I can't really do much with the east-west output circuit, but I can do a lot with the amplifier circuit, with the 20 watt audio amplifier. There it is, down there, and uh, here we have the data sheet. It is the TDA 7262 20 plus 20 watt stereo amplifier with standby, and there it is, multi watt 11. And they could have left two of those pins away because uh, they are not connected. And uh, a third one is connected to a useless standby option, which uh, I, uh, I just completely left away as well. This part is not there. Nothing's connected to pin 3. But there is the uh, recommended circuit. Rather simple, not much going on. Uh, quite, f quite a few things going on at the speaker outputs, but um, there is the test circuit. I actually, <laughs> I got the two confused. I actually built the test circuit, but they are identical except for the speaker output capacitors. The uh, application circuit here uh, gives you the cheap version. The test circuit gives you the uh, the good 20, uh, 2200 microfarad capacitors. This one has just a thousand. Uh, 2200 is the maximum. It does give you some uh, some hints for uh, designing the circuits yourself right there. And uh, that's actually what the Grundig people did, or the Philips people. I guess the TV was designed by Philips. Um, but uh, apparently they uh, had their own design because, you know, I thought, oh, that must be pretty simple. Just pull all the parts out of that circuit board and uh, reassemble them on this circuit board right here. But uh, no, there were plenty of components that I just could not find. So apparently they used other values. Um, this has been a bit of a problem right there. Um, the gain setting that's done through these two resistors. Um, I didn't have those uh, resistors, didn't have the exact values. 1.3k is a very unusual value, so it's kind of weird that they even used it. I put in 1.2 and uh, 18 ohms, I didn't have that either. Or Actually, I had one 18 ohm resistor, but obviously for stereo you need two. So I put in 22 ohms and, uh, oh, the difference is not too, not too terribly big, but unfortunately uh, these uh, tolerances do add up in one direction, meaning we're having not that much gain. In theory, we should have a higher power output um, with that set up, but also a bit more distortion. So uh, it uh, it is uh, a bit of a compromise, but it does work. And uh, Grundig probably used different uh, gain setting resistors as well. Is, well, once again, I could not find any of those on the circuit board. And also, uh, I don't think the TV had uh, 20 watt per channel output. Uh, I'd say 10 watts at maximum. It, it did go pretty loud, I do know that, but not that loud. Anyway, uh, there it is, all on the circuit board. I was uh, not able to... Uh, stuff the uh, speaker output capacitors into there and uh, these need to be replaced. These are some old and nasty 1970s capacitors so they are probably limiting our sound quality quite a bit. And there we have the uh, the circuit all set up uh, rather traditionally on one of these uh, strip boards. And uh, Well my camera, oh there it goes. Camera doesn't really like focusing onto, uh, onto uh, the undersides of circuit boards. Had to go a little creative with the uh, with the amplifier chip. Not sure we can see. 
and there you can see it. I had to bend the leads around until they were all straight and I actually cut off the unused uh, pins right at the chip and uh, that way I managed to get this thing onto the circuit board because uh, this, the usual setup, um, no way. <laughs> that doesn't work. But anyway, uh, a quick test. I already tested this thing using the frequency generator and uh, it does do pretty well from 30, ha from 30 hertz, round about there, all the way up to, well, around 20 kilohertz. At that point it starts to uh, slowly drop out. And now I have it hooked up to the cassette deck and uh, so we can actually have a very, very, very quick sample of the uh, sound quality. Um, there is the uh, power supply. I have this uh, sound mixer hooked up as a volume control. And uh, we now press play. cassette deck appears to need a new belt. <laughs> that doesn't sound quite right. Anyway, it does work. I did have a bit of a problem right at the beginning of my tests. It uh, started oscillating and I had to turn it off because uh, it, uh, it would overheat. But uh, this chip does have a thermal overload protection, but uh, of course you don't want to put that to the test. Um, but anyway, um, apparently it was just some sort of an instability uh, caused by all the things I connected to this poor th circuit. Um, like uh, I hooked up the oscilloscope to the speaker outputs. Um, with the speaker connected, you can't hook it up directly. You do need a load. But uh, that, uh, that would cause things to uh, act a little funny. And uh, I guess with this thing dialing in all sorts of uh, strange frequencies like uh, what I think the maximum frequency this thing can do is like, well, I'm not sure. I think it's like 200 kilohertz. But uh, when I did that, uh, it uh, it wasn't too happy. It would still output something, but uh, obviously you wouldn't hear it. These speakers are dropping out at pretty exactly 20 kilohertz. Well, there it is, the little amplifier I built using the TDA7262 chip out of the old Grundig television. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.